Work continues on installing solar into our Thor Axis 27.7. It's a total custom job being done by a student, so do your own research or hire an expert. Understanding the electrical requirements of all the interfaced components is the real skill in this. In this video, I complete all the functionality of the solar system. We wired the panels, installed the charge controller, completed the AC in and AC out wiring for the inverter to the RV breaker box, installed a new battery isolation monitor for lithium batteries, installed a Bluetooth controller for the MultiPlus inverter charger, tested the system out and learned how well it's going to work. Well, I'm up on the roof of the RV and I've got all the panels wired, which is not a big deal. And I've been checking the orange and white wire that come out of where the, few, where the breaker box is and I'm not getting any power down there, even though they're connected. And I'm sure those are the wires because I kind of traced them to the fan here and they have them sticking out but if I look in here it looks like there's a red and a black wire so I'm going to test my connections right there again and assuming I have power right there I'm gonna have to cut this bracket out and um, deal with it because something something's not right well, I took the solar ready bracket off. The only thing that I'm using from the, you know, the original coach anyway, the, I thought I knew I could see the red and the black wire through the bracket here, but then it's butt, sl butt spliced to the orange and white wires. At this point, it's seeming like the actual connectors that were on the ends of this uh, go power were not, were defective somehow. I had to replace the go power solar, so I just direct connected it to the wires and have a different pass through that I'm going to finish installing now. These wires have connectors there so it's not a big deal well there we go it works now so the solar panels up here are connected in series parallel these two long ones the plus and the minus the plus of one and the minus of the other are connected together and then the same thing with these two back here so the plus and the minus are connected together. And then the other plus is connected to the second plus, And the other minus is connected to the second minus. And then they go back down to the charge controller. So you get, you get the voltage from two panels together. So that's in the 40s. And then you get the amperage is calculated based on the number of s strings you have. Each two pair is a string. So we have two and the amperage from one string is about nine and a half. We have whatever, 18, 19 amps at 40 some volts max, which wor should work out to 800 watts. We have not gotten 800 watts yet, even though you would think right now we would be, but the batteries are fully charged, so it's all wasted right now. <laughs> the solar charge controller takes the power from the solar panels and optimizes it to charge the batteries. It was a tight fit where I installed it, but it works fine. Connecting the Victron MultiPlus inverter charger to the breaker box is the main integration. Be careful. The new battery isolation manager is to optimize alternator charging for lithium batteries. And we've got it in there, but as usual, the case is nothing's easy. It was really hard to get out the two bolts that hold the unit to the chassis 
are stuck in plastic where you can't even fit a socket on them easily and so it was really hard to get the old one out and the new one back in sort of harder than it should have been I'm sure when they put that together this uh, fiberglass shell wasn't here installing the VE bus smart dongle is pretty easy but setting it up in the Victron connect app was scary I emailed Battleborn and they told me it was safe to ignore these messages and they were right it worked they have great customer service with that installed we now have Bluetooth apps for each of the three main system components the battery monitor the multi plus inverter charger and the solar charge controller there's an external viewer for the battery monitor that we are using but the Bluetooth apps show all the information in an easy to use interface that you can see anywhere in or near the RV. Installing a solar system in an RV is a complex project, not for the faint of heart. Retrofitting systems is always a challenge, and you'll quickly learn it's not cheap. It may not be financially justified unless you're boondocking full time. But it was an investment we decided was worth it for us. We now have an off-grid electrical system for at home and on the road. Did you know that solar panels work best in cooler temperatures? That's right, when it's Florida hot and sunny out, you generate less power than on a cooler day. I'm trying to better understand how our system works and what we can expect from it. But now we can run everything in the RV and even run our air conditioner for short periods. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to follow RVing with the Maracas.